um welcome back to my channel so for today wait can you start over i feel like my I'm body is edit out of everything my body is you just keep adjusting it and then i'll edit it out Break the table. Okay, hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm here with my guest, Rachel Obima. Hello, hi. Rachel and I went to UT, we went to UT together. together and we did our undergrad there. She recently just graduated. Yay. <laughs> and um, we're both going to medical school. So um, even though we have a lot of similarities, mm -hmm. there is one thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of differences. And we have, we do have a lot of differences, but <laughs> I feel like this difference could help you guys. I edit a lot. Like, a lot of things, just, there's a lot of bloopers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like my lip gloss is too much. No. I swear my face looks really dry. I think it looks fine. I just look like, uh, orange. So Alright, so one difference that we do have is the way that we kind of journey through college. Um, I had a 3.5 applying to medical school and she had a 4.0 and I just wanted to tell you the differences, things that we did differently. I'm going to let Rachel talk to you about her story and her experience in college and then I'm going to talk about mine very briefly and uh, just show you guys the difference basically. Um, okay, well, like Diana said, I'm Rachel Abima, and we both went to UT together. Um, I would just say, coming into college, I was one of those typical students who graduated top of their class and was ready to like prove to the world, oh, I, I'm, I'm not just smart in high school, I'm smart in college. And so I remember taking my first biology exam, and the, the grade wasn't that great. Mm -hmm. and I remember think, thinking, like, oh my gosh, so I'm actually abroad. <laughs> And so I remember feeling, um, I had that imposter syndrome. I remember feeling as if I wasn't, I didn't really like belong there and all of the accolades I received was just invalidated. And so um, because of that initial moment in my freshman year, I remember thinking, okay, well, I need to figure out a way to like improve or I need to figure out a way to do better. And so I thought about all the things that I didn't do to prepare for that exam and then I just did everything the opposite. And so I didn't prepare early and I didn't really do any practice questions or I didn't really read the textbook. And so for the second exam, I spent a lot of time um, just studying uh, outside of the classroom before it was time to like study for exams. And so I, was, I, I started putting my exam uh, notifications like yeah. in my calendar yeah. so I knew that I had an exam two weeks in advance. So let me tell you the difference in what I did. <laughs> So I came to school and I was, I also had the imposter syndrome. I got a bad grade and I think calculus was the first thing I got a really bad grade in. And I said, oh, okay, better luck next time. And then I cried a little bit and then I did the exact same thing. So I think yeah. the first thing to note there is that she recognized that, you know, this is what not to do. Yeah. Obviously it's not giving me a good result, so mm -hmm. let me change up yeah, my study habits. I cried myself to sleep <laughs> and did the same thing again. And then I dropped calculus. So I think the first thing is to recognize your mistakes mm -hmm. because everybody I think goes through yeah. imposter syndrome. It's yeah. like what you do afterwards mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, what else? Well, I am the type of person to study alone when I'm learning material, but I love to study with people when we're practicing material. And so I know a lot of people, they might not distinguish between when it's time to study yeah. on your own or when it's time to study in a group. Because right. when you're really studying in a group, it's, you don't, I personally don't focus as much. Yeah. I'm easily, easily distracted. So when I'm learning material, I'm definitely not in like a colorful space. People find mm -hmm. it funny, but it's, I'm super serious. No, I, I make it. sure I'm in a dull area. There's not people around and I'm like super focused and in my right. zone. And then when I've learned all the material I need to learn, I can study with my friends so that we can like talk about things happening outside of the classroom, right. but also about Back the material. The so right. it's like having those conversations is good too. And so having those two types of studying, um, yeah, so Studying. for me, um, the first two years didn't do that. So <laughs> I was under the impression, well in high school, I always studied by myself because 
I felt like, you know, when you go home, like no one ever came to my house. Yeah, like, no, one, no, one's a, no, one's, no one's school. studying together in high school. It's not necessary. Yeah. So I did a lot of individual studying. But when I came to college, first two years, I thought that going to the library was an act of studying. <laughs> I thought like actively getting your things together, mm. getting your food together, getting your friends <laughs> together, sitting on a table. <laughs> chips. Chips. Everything sitting on a table with listening to music. noise, listening to music, got your oh playlist ready. No, was studying, and then you realize six hours have passed, and you've done a total of thirty yeah. minutes of work. And then, I think realizing that mm -hmm. you don't work well studying in a group initially yeah. is a good step. But I think that applies to most people. Most people. You got to learn the material for yourself you because be distracted. you can't. And then when you go to a group setting, it's good to prove that you know the material yeah. by teaching it back to other people and bouncing ideas mm -hmm. off of each other. Mm -hmm. So I think those are that's when group studying is helpful, yeah. but usually I think the common practice is to do that after you have the knowledge for yourself. Yeah. So that was my first two years of college where things were just whatever. Yeah, my, okay. when I first started college, I didn't, my friend and I, we were, we were like best friends, but we were different majors. So we never studied together. So I was always in the dorm just studying by myself. And so I kind of got in the habit of learning and studying on my own and it wasn't until sophomore year where I started being like social mm -hmm. where people were like you should come study with us yeah and I go and study with them and I realized wow I actually didn't learn anything exactly and so that's how I was able to see the difference exactly. between studying with people yeah I think that's a major thing as well but so junior year for me so the first two years of me were just catastrophic like they my, my GPA was so it didn't make sense like it wasn't like university probation low and it wasn't like something where if I would tell somebody they'd be like oh that sucks but if I told her like she'd be like that sucks <laughs> no yes no I mean to be I would rather somebody tell me to my face like improve you need to improve and I think for me it was realizing um I haven't really changed my major yet and I need to apply for medical school so this GPA is not gonna fly. <laughs> and so junior year, what I did is that I started to implement individual studying. I started to, I moved away from campus. I stayed in my apartment and it really forced me to be in a spot yeah. to learn how I study. Focus. The focus and learn how, and that brings me to my next point. Learning how you study and learning it fast. Like, so we learned that individual versus group setting, but mm -hmm. also how do you like, retain information? Yeah, like visual learning, visual, audio, audio tactile, yeah. and speaking. Mm -hmm. um, so, for me, what I did differently and what I saw was the biggest difference in my GPA, how it like really, really skyrocketed, was the fact that I needed to see material at least three times. So, I needed to pre read, take all the material from online if your professor provides lectures and mm -hmm. stuff. Go through it, you don't have to do it super in depth, but make sure you know what like you're to expect yeah, when yeah. you come to class the next day. And then afterwards, if you can re record lectures, it'd be great when you're reviewing later, especially before an exam, because now you're seeing it and hearing it. For me, that's what works. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really do flashcards um, unless it's like before, right before an exam to, to, to memorize. But for, in terms of concepts, I have to speak it back out. So once I've seen it, pre-read it, and then listened to it, and I have to teach myself it again. And that would be a great time to go to the library, meet up with my classmates. Yeah and say, okay, this is what I've retained from the lectures. So like, what did you continue to do? So for me, it was kind of, like I remember them saying, you need to learn how to study and you should read before class. And I remember trying to do that and it never, it never worked out for me. Mm -hmm. Reading for class did absolutely nothing for me. Whenever the professor would mention something I supposedly read, I wouldn't it wouldn't ring a bell because mm -hmm. I just wouldn't remember. Mm -hmm. And so I just stopped reading before class altogether. And I realized that with everybody, you, how you study and how you learn, how you retain information mm -hmm. is completely different. And for me, I found that it worked to just go to class with a fresh mind, not knowing what's going on, mm -hmm. and listening. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a great listener when it comes to... Uh, when it comes to... Um, learning in class, right. I can get it right on in and there, but if I'm confused or like I won't have it like, it won't be super, it will, the knowledge won't be super deep, yeah, yeah. but I can retain it and yeah. walk away with, okay, that makes sense. So you said you were an active participator in class. I wasn't an active participator yeah. in class, but I was never, I didn't, maybe not active participator, but more like active listener. listener. Yeah. I was never like distracted in class. Yeah. I was always excited to learn. I was always just sitting there every in the front, time? like, every oh, okay, single yeah. time. Every single I mean, time, every I mean, I'm a human being, so okay. not every 
single time. But, yeah. But for the most part, I don't remember being distracted in class. Yeah. And so that that the class as the first exposure for the material was okay with me. Mm -hmm. And then going, um, like I said, I'll have like alarms just mm -hmm. to say, oh, you have an exam in two weeks. Yeah. And so in that that's two weeks, that's huge. Yeah. Putting down your schedule, your syllabus. As, as soon, soon as, as you, you get, get your syllabus. syllabus, there's no such thing as syllabus week. Yeah. There is no such no. thing as like. As soon as you get it, you need to be on Google Calendar putting every single. You don't close exam, that thing every back single up. quiz, yes. every single assignment mm -hmm. with notifications, multiple notifications, multiple, so, so that you yeah. know if I when it's. It was time Ooh, for final exam. Exactly when it was time for final exams, mm -hmm. I even took it so far as to put when I was going to study for an exam. Yeah. Because it's yeah. you will think that you have enough time to study for five exams in two weeks. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so you have to start since. Like as soon as you get that third exam, yeah. you know if it's four exams and the fourth one is the final. By exam three, you know everything. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to you're know supposed everything. To you're everything. And they're gonna give you like, what, half a week of new material that's gonna be worth Trash. nothing? Trash. Exactly. So <laughs> what you need to do, or what I did was that I, two weeks ahead, I would say every single day I'm doing something in every single class. And I would rank it by importance. Cause at mm -hmm. this point, at the end of the semester, you know what you need to do to achieve your grades. And like if you want a certain grade in the class, you should probably already know what you need to get. I don't ever like get down to the number because that makes me paranoid. Mm -hmm. But I at least know how much time I need to put towards it. Yeah. But um, yeah. So so I'll have the alarm mm -hmm. to say, okay, your exam's in two weeks. And so then I will start reviewing the material, like go over slides. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've learned that when I write, when I write out. I'm such a visual learner. Yeah. Well, I don't know what that is. Like, is that the I think because thing like that you're saying you you writing it. I feel like yeah, getting your hand motion yeah. and like especially yeah. looking at looking at my professor's notes, looking at my notes. Yeah, combining them and yeah. then putting it on a study yeah. guide. Yeah, putting it, it works in you, your own words. It helps you. Yeah. It really forces you to think about what you're seeing, yeah. what you're learning, and rewriting it and putting it in pretty colors and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it makes it exciting and you just retain it more. And so yeah, and I think like materials. Study yeah. Guides. Definitely, and I think like also seeing the material, like it's so hard for me to just read a, a textbook cover to cover, like a chapter. Yeah. I have to ask myself, what did I just read? And yeah. that's really important yeah, yeah, that yeah. you did that yeah. there. I think that's a very common thing to do. And um, then, yeah, that, that usually happens within that first week of, okay, after I'm done writing my study notes, the exam is in one week. And then I spent the last week doing the last few uh, slides for maybe we had one more class or two mm -hmm. more classes. But then usually it's just practice, practice, practice. And if I don't have any practice questions mm -hmm. or don't have any old exams, I usually just read the textbook as if it's a novel. Like I don't even take notes. Right. I just sit there. I just sit there and read it as if, because I should already know it. You should already know. So the reading so it should, should make difficult sense. or yeah. whatever. It's you not shouldn't have new to material rush to take yeah. notes. You just read it and you just like, okay, yeah. yeah. It's like having like a, that conversation in your head yeah. like, with the textbook. So. Definitely. And I also think that. Um, cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, practice. Practice, practice, practice. People think that, you know, just because I don't know the material right now, yeah. I'm gonna get questions wrong. The questions that you get wrong are the ones that you're going to remember mm -hmm. the most. Absolutely. Because you have suffered through them. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're like, wait, what? You're like, oh, come on, I knew that. Like, you're gonna remember that, oh, this is something that I yeah. tripped on before. So yeah. even before you think you know the material, use the practice test, I have practice exam. a exams. testimony for that. That first bio biology mm -hmm. exam I took freshman year, um, I had a mentor that I was like super sad to, and then he was like, oh, well, I have like this big test bank of practice questions mm -hmm. that most people in those classes use, here you go. It had 200 questions, bef the 200 questions for all the material that I was learning for the next exam. Yeah. I studied and did all 200 questions. Wow. Ask me what I got on the second exam. 100. 100. Yeah. Hundred. <laughs> <laughs> See, so like it's really important that you, you practice. Know, practice. Don't be afraid of the yeah. questions. It's not an actual exam. And you have to practice questions that make sense. Like they're yeah. questions that are your professor. Yeah, don't look up styles, random, random questions. Not random. Learn questions. how your professor tests. Yeah, your professor is yeah. not going to test like your last professor. Absolutely. Not. Learn the first exam yeah. should be a learning curve. Learning. Yeah. Yeah. The second exam, you should have your study habits down and know what to quickly. Well, actually, no. You should have done that a long time ago. Second exam, you need to like this is I'm practicing my yeah. new mm -hmm. study technique. Yeah. Third exam, 
you have to knock it out. You ha it has to be the you have best. To, it has to be your That's best. That's actually exam. how it usually is for me. My first exam is always the lowest exam. exam. Always the lowest exam. And then I'm like, okay, well, this is how they are. Yeah. This second is, is usually change. higher. Third, I can afford to. Afford to, depending to on how high the second Yeah, was. depending on how high the second one and if the professor offers a drop. Yeah. Then third, I'm like, okay. Because I remember one time after London, I sacrificed the whole exam. It was, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but I knew I could afford to make a lower grade now. So I didn't go as hard, but I knew I had to come very hard for the final. And I, any last minute thoughts? Um, don't give up. Yeah, don't give up. And also, I would say GPA is not everything at it all. It isn't because it's not everything. We still got to where we wanted to go, exactly. and it did. I we didn't let it define us. Like yeah. I'm not walking around with. 3.5. Yeah, oh yeah. The difference God. between 3.5 and 4.0 is too small for you to use it as a value determiner. Yes. Yeah. You are worth more than yeah, your GPA. Yeah. And I know like, oh, I'm going to professional school, everyone's gonna look, they're gonna throw my applications to the side. Yeah. You have so much more to If bring. you're an exceptional person, you're ex an exceptional person You're gonna person shine through regardless. those things. Yeah. You're gonna be an excellent person yeah. regardless of your GPA. So we were just giving you tips. Um, go. You can you can use them if you want. You can apply them the way you want them to. Mm -hmm. Add your own flavor, add your mm -hmm. own style. Um, but thank you so much for watching this video. I'm really hopeful hopeful that it's helpful to you. There will be more academic related videos coming in the future. I also want to thank Rachel for coming. Of course, to, it's fun. Uh, you can follow her on Instagram. Oh. Um, you don't have to. You don't want to. Plug no, your stuff. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you for watching. Oh, wait, I'm, should I? Do you want to? I mean, no one's gonna, no one watch. You can put it in your description. You can put it in your description. Okay, so every, follow her on social media. Um, all of her information will be on the description box. If you want, I guess reach out to her. her. I, yeah, yeah. Some reach. people actually have been reaching out to me about some tips, like studying for the MCAT or just the pre med journey in general. Yeah. And like, I've it's forced me to like create a whole like this yeah. whole list so if you if you want to if you want to hear more advice from rachel i can definitely set up things to where we can like because uh, she's i'm going out of state and she's staying in state mm -hmm. so we can do like skype stuff whenever we have time so uh, we can upload that again but um yeah thank you so much for watching all of her information's in the description box all of my information's in the description box and i'll see you guys in my next video bye <laughs>